Hedge fund titan Ray Dalio, who has uh, made billions uh, through the buying and selling of security, says the capitalism is not working and that income inequality is a national emergency. Many politicians in the Democratic Party agree with him. We're going to uh, be speaking with the governor of Connecticut, Ned Lamont, in just a few minutes. Um, you gave $100 million to Connecticut. We'll talk about that in a second. But we want to start with Bridgewater Associates founder Ray Dalio and the warning he just issued on how American capitalism isn't working uh, for the majority of Americans. Good morning. Good morning. Um, hot off of your big segment on 60 Minutes last night. We're glad to have you here live. Um, let's talk about that because I think a lot of people, millions of people watched you last night say that uh, American capitalism, capitalism was broken. We've been having a debate on the set about what that actually means and how you ultimately fix it. So when you say capitalism is broken, is it the capitalist and capitalistic system you think is broken or is it the policies around capitalism, around taxes and what Washington can do that you think is broken. I'm, I didn't say I didn't say broken. I said that it needs to be reformed. I, I'm a capitalist. I'm a professional capitalist. The system has worked for me. I didn't have anything, and then I got something through the capitalist system. And capitalism means the ability to save and invest in capital markets and private enterprise and all of that. And I'm supportive of that. Then there are the outcomes, right? And so the question is equal opportunity or the American dream. So I was raised with equal opportunity. I went to a public school system that my, um, and, and I had parents who took care of me, and then I was able to come in with an equal job opportunities. And what I'm saying here is if you look at the outcomes, um, the outcomes of the majority of people, I looked at the bottom 60% of the population, and I said, is it working for them? Just facts. Um, how has it been for income? How has it been for equal opportunity? And those, this has been something for a long, 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 long time. So is that deniable that it is producing those outcomes? And it is not only producing those outcomes, this isn't controversial. If it's producing those outcomes, and it's also producing a terrible split in our country. And we're going to have more problems ahead because of technology and other things that are coming at us in terms of having impact that are going to be like that. If we don't step back and say, how do we reform it? Reform means improve it. But here's the question. I want to talk about improving it. But is, is, is the concept here that we need to work on policy in terms of redistribution that effectively helps with education and health care and all of these other things? Or is there something wrong with capitalism? And do you therefore then look at yourself as a byproduct of capitalism that isn't working for the rest of the country. I look at myself as a byproduct of capitalism when it also gave equal opportunity. That I could, the American dream, I was very lucky to live the American dream by having the proper care and the proper public school education. Right. And What's that, changed? I'm sorry? What's changed? The, the whole, look at the statistics. In my piece on LinkedIn. But what no, about capitalism? What's, what's, what's changed in the in Capitalism, the wait, we talked about what's this offset. What's changed? What's changed? All, all changed? capitalism is, is the private, and then I'll let you go, but it's just the means of production in society are, are in the private sector. It's not state run, the government sector. So it's, from when you succeeded with capitalism when you did to where we are now, what about capitalism has changed? Uh, it, not the, uh, Tax policy a, a, might a not number be of, a, a number of things have, have changed. First, um, the capitalism works to produce a profit, and the motivation of the profit is also the reinforcement of the system. You, you contribute, and as a prices, result of contributing. Right, buyer okay, and a now, seller. for a variety of reasons, having to do, for example, with the development of technologies in which it's profitable to replace people as okay. a result of Automation. those technologies, we are losing a middle class. So the amount of money that goes to that middle class and then goes to those school districts has changed significantly as a result of the process of, which I think is a good process, of improving profitability by being able to then have that technology change or even the going global, it's, it's a great thing. I, I'm a globalist, uh, global. But it has the impact as a result of creating a wealth gap. And such other things along those lines have changed the resource allocation so that that resource allocation right. is leading to a result. So I'm a mechanic, when, an engineer when it comes to uh, capitalism. But your, your fixes are not to capitalism. Your fixes are to things like 
uh, like tax policy or, or to things like improving I, public education. Or the, but to do that, you gave $100 million. No, 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 wait a second. You can't separate tax poly from policy from economic policy. Okay, I can can't separate say, from capitalism. No, 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 no. You can't separate it from capitalism. For example, I'm a practical guy, right? In the markets, and what happens is, if you change, let's say, corporate tax rates, which we did, which was beneficial um, uh, uh, to getting us productivity at the at the corporation level, that has an effect. It has an effect of how money flows. So we're talking about engineering. My point is, you can't say that. Capitalism is apart from tax policy. I, monetary okay. policy, fiscal policy, right. tax but policy the, okay, don't are we all need part of that the, the engine of capitalism. Don't we need the, the, what, what accrues from capitalism? Don't we need that to improve, to use those funds, whether it's philanthropic like you, whether it's tax funds, don't we need that engine to generate the funds to improve education, to, impro to, to equalize opportunity? Exactly. Isn't that the way it works? Exactly. But then how, what so needs to be second, reformed about capitalism? Are you going to let me say Go something? Go ahead. What needs to be reformed about capitalism? Okay. Do we agree that it is not delivering equal opportunity? Yeah, you keep saying that, but yes, okay, so we need... Okay. I, I, but you can't do an experiment Can without controlling... Can you answer my question? Do right, we agree... but how do you know that that's capitalism, not all these other things do happening you, in society? You need to do an experiment. Because, look, I'm, I don't think it's complicated. I think it's so, pretty complicated. I think it's a public school system. In unions. Can, it, can we do this without interruptions? I'll go say ahead. something, right. and you, you say something, ahead. and we do it that way? Fine. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. I'm saying that the outcomes, as a result, are, are destroying uh, equal opportunity. Okay? We agree on that, right? Uh, I'm, no, I don't think we no, do in terms of... I don't agree that the outcomes for capitalism are what's destroying it. I think there's all these other variables, so it many things do, in the United States. One way or another, you've got to engineer the goddamn thing to deliver the results that are there. These the results, these results, these results of unequal equ equ um, education, unequal conditions and so on, right. mean that it's a joke in terms of trying to deliver what we need to have done. Capitalism. What I'm referring to, that includes tax policy, okay. that includes monetary policy, that includes the pursuit of profits in a way that um, we need a plan for so that we don't read, we, we right. um, have an opportunity so that we deliver, a, so it's an engineering question, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you and I can disagree. Okay, so I, I have two questions that relate to engineering. If, if you don't believe that it is a problem, and I think no one's not. No one's saying it's not a problem. We're so saying then, what is the cause of the so problem? Is, is not capitalism. Is tax part of that? Is, yes. So uh, then, sounds what are like we you want to you want to tax wealthy people and pay no, for I want and one pay for education. One That's way fine. Or another. That's fine. I want to deliver the things that I had. Okay. And that make the system work well. Okay. Because the waste. For example, the problem in education. We're going to come up with the governor, and we're going to talk about the partnership that we have. And I think that's kind of a model for what can be done. And so I'm just trying to be right. specific. Mm -hmm. That literally, that what we have is a situation in which the go we have a state that is fractured, that the rich and the poor, the gap between the rich and the poor is very large. And the notion of bringing in partnership, private-public right. partnership, to deal with education. They have a $900 million a year expense for prisons, for people who are in incarcerated as a product of a system that doesn't educate children properly, doesn't give them jobs so, and opportunity. That is cost effective. That's cost effective to provide that. But the state, we are going to show you right. that there is a net positive return on investment as well as a social return on investment and there's a partnership. Now you can you could say that that's capitalism or not capitalism. Let's not argue about terms. That is a reality. Let me ask we you can this. Do that. Uh, Dan Reifel uh, is an advisor to a number of Democrats in Washington. Uh, he says every billionaire is a policy failure, meaning that effectively by becoming a billionaire, that the way the policies are set up, whether it's tax or other policies, is a failure. Do you agree with that? No, no, no. That's so screwed up. I mean, uh, what happens is we, ha we have a system that I think is a beautiful system that um, connects, but it's imperfect, right. that it connects um, productivity or, th or what you're giving to what you're getting back. And those people generally are, I'd say almost, are net contributors to the society. And it's a dream. That was what the American dream was, 
okay? But in order to uh, have the results that we want, we have to make it a fair right. game, right? Okay, but let's talk about a fair game, and this one, this one may be complicated for you. Bridgewater um, was subsidized, it, it took a tax subsidy from the state of Connecticut, $22 million, I believe, uh, a couple years ago, to stay in Connecticut. These are sort of part of the larger issues that are being raised around how capitalism in the purest private sense works relative to how public policy works in tandem with it. Yeah, so I think uh, um, there's always economic issues for anybody in terms of whether they're going to stay or leave and their calculations. And I ran, I was CEO right. at the time, I'm now chairman. I ran it at, at a time where what, there was the question of what it means for each employee and what they pay for taxes and what that means for equalizing them. That's a practical reality. I think, in, and, and that, uh, another practical reality is donating $100 million right. to do this. This is the practical reality. Um, I think that, um, you know, well, let's put that aside. That may have been a mistake for us to take. I think probably it was a mistake because everybody pays too much attention to that and not enough attention to what it means to pull together to do the things right. In any case, um, that's part of the system do you in terms of... you to take it or a mistake for Connecticut to offer it? No, mistake to us to take it. Because of the conversation it's created? Not because, because of the conversation it's created. Because people pay too much attention to those types of things where you, when you're thinking about it, like the, the spirit of the people in a, at Bridgewater is this is a home. This is a community. This is a place that we, we don't want to move. But it does have effect in right. terms of dollars and so on. And that was, a, that was small in the scope of everything in, in that notion. Right. So the important thing here is to pull together and to do this. My wife has been doing this for 10 years. This is not a new program right. that we're doing. We've been doing this for 10 years. And if you look at what the other people in, in our and Bridgewater have done in terms of the contributions, um, in total, we've paid over a billion dollars in taxes over the last 10 years. We've, um, the philanthropic has been about $250 million donations. And I think too much attention is spent okay, on this. Right. So I think I was, it was a mistake. After you last night, it. Langone was on. So Langone raised $100 million for NYU Medical School and then actually contributed then another $350 million he raised. Here's his book. It's called I Love Capitalism. He created a company that now has 325,000 employees, $225 billion in market cap that shareholder wealth has accrued. His ideas are in contrast to yours. I don't know who's right and who's wrong, but when he looks at education, he looks at maybe private, like choice, maybe charter schools. Your uh, contribution goes to public schools, which I would say that that's not the private sector's issue. That, that's, that's the public sector that has messed up the public school system, right? So. What is the difference between you and Ken Langone? He says, I love capitalism. He's created 325,000 jobs. You say that capitalism is the problem. I think, first of all, I think you're splitting hairs between us. What, what, do, you, uh, what do you mean splitting hairs? If you'll give me a chance to answer, okay. I will answer. Uh -huh. Okay. I think you're splitting hairs between us because I think that uh, he's a, um, we're both capitalists. We, it's all work for us. Right. He's a very philanthropic man who wants to go for the goals and he's a big contributor in that right. particular way. The question is whether you make it pervasively effective. I personally believe that if you don't make public education pervasively excellent, the, the way that I had, then, and operate that way, that that's not adequate. And, and when I say I believe, I would say it's my wife who, who believes this right. too. She's led the way. I watch her go into these schools and watch these teachers. And I look at the starvation, essentially, the financial and in some cases nutritional starvation that goes on in the public school systems. And I think that that's an, a national problem. But it's not, just, it's not just school systems. It has to do with that notion of getting basic things that you want and I want for our children. The thing that you want more, and everybody wants more, is to have basic, the, take care of the basics. Can I have nutrition? Can I have a, an adequate education? If you take care of those basics. So in one way or another, the way that is, is lost. I, I know Ken, and I know he wouldn't object to anything that I'm saying. 
And I also would know that if you take a look at it, we each pick the things that are most important. No, I understand. I'm just trying to understand the reforms to the capitalist system that, 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 you're, that you're espousing. I, I still maybe, don't understand. I'm trying to make it. Right. Uh, we got to take a quick pause. I have one, one question, and then we're going to go, and we're going to come back and talk, talk education. But in terms of taxes to yourself, you said you'd be uh, open to higher taxes on, on yourself. Yes, of course. What does that mean? And the reason I ask is, and I've talked a lot about this, you're going to give a lot of money away over your lifetime. Yeah. Uh, probably most of it. Yeah. Most of that will not ever get taxed. You will get to choose how you get to spend that money in a way that most taxpayers do not. Do you think there should be a tax, effectively, on the philanthropy, given that the majority of your wealth currently under the current structure will never actually get into the tax system and therefore be able to be used um, through the government, if you will. I think, that, I think taxes and uh, philanthropy each have their roles. I think philanthropy serves the purpose of being able to say that this thing, on the money right. that you've earned, you can focus on those things that you think are most important to you. I think the problem exists when um, whether it's an absence of philanthropy or an absence of ta taxation, that there is a failure to deliver that result. I honestly don't understand what we're arguing about. I don't understand what we're arguing about. What? That they shouldn't, that those kids or those people shouldn't be raised? The cost is $900 million to the state of Connecticut for incarceration. The United States has five times the highest, next highest country's incarceration rate in terms of that. That's a product, and that's changed over a period of time. So we have a problem, right? We and need, what we we need call, to equalize opportunity, just like we you're need saying. To equalize but we, use, we, we need to use capitalism to provide the funds to equalize the opportunity. That's my only point. Do you I think, think the system agree. is delivering those results? I don't think that you can do an experiment in a vacuum and say it's because of a flaw in capitalism. I think, if, there's, I think there's myriad flaws for the way they, I think you, there's uh, drugs. I think there's single parents. I think there's uh, a systemic poverty that's been around forever. If you want to tax wealthy people more and try to fix all no. these things, then let's do it. Fine. Uh, but in this uh, but not, you're not going to make... this LinkedIn piece, I take point by point. I do it from an engineering point of view. Right, right now, this is a short conversation right. that, it, that, is, uh, uh, that is like this. If you want to take the time to look at it point by point from an engineering, how much of it is because of technology replacing the middle class? Right. That's how much problem. of it is this thing or that thing? You could look on the LinkedIn piece and piece okay. by piece. Find something there that you disagree with, and I'd be happy to respond to it. Joining us right now is Connecticut Governor uh, Ned Lamont. Thank you for being here. Ray, of course, is still here, and we should say that he and his wife pledged $100 million to Connecticut schools this Friday, uh, a big decision. And we you. did it. We did it in, in a partnership. Like the deal was, we put up a hundred million dollars. The state puts up a hundred million dollars, and other philanthropists and businesses put up a hundred million dollars. So we get three hundred million dollars into targeting that education. Um, and this is based on experiences my wife has had over the last ten years of working with that population. So we have a partnership that has brought people together that different people who all ordinarily would be alienated, right. they've been brought together to pursue that mission. So, Governor, talk us through how this happened and how potentially it would be scalable or replicatable in other states and how this is different, effectively, we were talking about policy and taxing, uh, taxing companies and individuals, how this is different than taxing them. This is effectively a philanthropic effort, but how that would work in the public sector elsewhere. Ray is great, but I got to tell you, Barbara Dalio has been doing this at schools across the state for um, you know many many years, working with the teachers, getting their best ideas, and helping to fund them so they can act on their ideas. And I got to know Barbara pretty well at uh, some of the schools where we cross paths. And our partnership now with the Dalio Foundation gives us an opportunity to take the very best ideas that we've seen working at some of our public schools and taking them across the state and giving kids an opportunity who otherwise wouldn't have an opportunity. What, what, what are some of those, those programs and projects? I just think about it because Mark Zuckerberg um, and Priscilla Chan gave $100 million to Newark. They matched it with two. Just the opposite. Dollars. Those are a bunch of consultants. Are, yeah, that was, it was consultants. They've spent about $60 million on charter schools, but they also paid off a lot of teacher contracts to get out the underperforming teachers. So what, what are you going to do with the money that's going to be different and really make it effective? We're taking the very best ideas from teachers. 
We've got a lot of kids who are, um, you know, disengaged, uh, disconnected, not on a track to graduation, not on the track to a, you know, successful life in the state, and getting them back on track. How do you do, we do what, that? What are through, some of the best ideas? Well, rather than jamming example. people in the special ed, we have mentoring programs. We have mm -hmm. tutorials and tutors. We have after-school programs. Things that come up school by school is generated by the teachers. I was uh, just up at uh, East Hartford High School with uh, Ray and Barbara the other day. And there they had, the kids are all wearing their um, leadership institute where they went back to school in August for two weeks just so they could catch up before September. It makes an enormous difference. It's working. We're going to leverage off of what works. Uh, Governor, big education and policy question. How much of this is a money problem, meaning you don't have enough money to do the things you want to do, versus mismanagement, people blame unions, people blame broken families. There, there are all sorts of issues that depending on what kind of viewer you are watching this this morning, you look at education, you say it's not, there are people who say it's not about the money. Do you agree or disagree with that? Look, I've held the line on spending and I've held the line on taxes and I have asked the uh, private um, sector to come up and step up in terms of philanthropists like the Dalio Foundation, in terms of our major uh, companies coming up and forgiving student loans. Money helps. I got to tell you, as governor, I can tell you that uh, money helps. Are we going to streamline things? We're going to make sure, as Becky said, it's not just a top-down consultant thing, but coming up, it's entrepreneurial. I mean, this is what we want to do. Give teachers a sense of empowerment, that we love our, their ideas, and we want to give them an opportunity to run with them. I'd like to um, be specific of uh, the programs that Barbara has led um, and have found highly impactful. The ability to get kids who would have dropped out of school, 22% of the high school students in Connecticut are disengaged or disconnected, meaning they're on the way of dropping out of high school or they're dropped out of high school. The cost of getting them th through to graduate high school and into a job is a pittance by comparison to the impact that that's having. $900 million a year is, on, is incarceration costs. So these programs are very effective. And I, I would say the teachers are unbelievable. They get so undercredited right. for there are saints. There are fabulous people who have fabulous programs that, are, that they're starving for resources. So there's no excuse not to have adequate resources. There are things like ad, not enough books. <laughs> not, I mean, how can we look at ourselves and say that that's starvation is how, not, do you, how do you identify those kids who are un, unengaged or um, under? This is, this is one of the beauties of the, one of the programs. She have, you have data. Mm -hmm. the, 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 right now, the data is scattered all around. So to bring those into, to collect the data and, I, and put them on an iPad, and they literally look at the iPads with the kids and with the teachers so they know who's going and they know then the points at which it's failing. Right. Like, for example, they drop out between eighth and ninth grade. Right. And, and at that moment, the mentoring program that the governor is referring to is a program that gets them from eighth to ninth grade successfully and then helps to provide that mentoring through the high school year to get them uh, beyond. But the, another part of this is they have to have the goal of a job. So, so to work with other um, companies in Connecticut and other places in terms of delivering a job is what the go governor and my wife and, and the legislature and the teachers are working on together. Let me just add on that, that it's, it's not just how expensive it is for a kid that doesn't graduate, what that costs the state. I need these kids stepping up. We have tens of thousands of jobs in the state of Connecticut. We can't fill. Our population is flat. Now is the time to take those kids who otherwise wouldn't have an opportunity, be it Electric Boat and Pratt and Whitney. We need those folks educated, ready to go. Governor, can you finally just speak to this issue of, of the American dream and, and capitalism, whether you think it's working and, and however we'd want to define capitalism as part of tax policy and other things, because one of the things that's happened in your state is there have been a lot of high uh, net worth earners that have left the state, uh, in part because of taxes, in part because of other issues, and that's actually put a real strain and challenge on the system, on education, and on these other issues. Some are leaving, but folks like Ray and Barbara Dalio are staying and recommitting. I'm holding the line on taxes, giving people a sense, I need you to uh, step up and do this. Look. American dream, let's face it, um, the American dream is alive and well in China. There they've got a middle class that's growing and, uh, you know, the next generation thinks they're going to do better off than their parents. But that's not true in New Britain. That's not true in New London. 
And programs like this that Ray and Barbara are doing are giving kids and their parents a sense that things are going to get better. Okay. Governor, thank you for being here this morning. Ray, thank you for being here and uh, having the conversation with us. Well, thank you for caring, and because we got to talk about this issue, particularly when we're in an election year, and then beyond that, we have other issues. So thank you okay. for allowing Come on it. back. We will continue this conversation, uh, I know.